Hello everyone, my name is Dan Guo. I'm a PhD student from Northeastern University. The title of my presentation is Deep Multiple Instance Learning Classifies Sub-Tissue Locations in Mass Spectrometry Images from Tissue Level Annotations. This work was done with my advisor Olga Viteg and Melanie, Veronica, Catherine, Peter and Oliver from University of Fairburg. So let me start my presentation by introducing the background of my spectrometry imaging and classification in MSI. MSI is a technique that can characterize the spatial distribution of ions throughout a sample. So how does it achieve the spatial distribution of ions? MSI experiment collects mass spectra at thousands of different locations in a raster pattern throughout a sample. For example, here we have a human renal cell carcinoma tissue. An MSI samples at one location and generates a mass spectrum, then it moves to another location and generates another mass spectrum, then move to the next, and then next until it goes through all the locations in a sample. With the capability of providing spatially resolved molecular information, MSI has a large variety of applications, among which classification is one important application of mass spectrometry imaging in clinical study. For example, the classification of tumor and non-tumor can help faster identification of tumor boundary during surgery. So in a standard routine, pathologists label each tissue by looking at the HNE stained optical images of tissues. Then MSI is applied to obtain the mass spectrum at each location. So use the mass spectrum at each location as features and labels from pathologists as labels, we can build a classifier to classify sub-tissue locations into tumor and non-tumor group. However, the problem is that tumor tissue is heterogeneous. So here is an example of a cell population in a breast cancer tissue from a patient. The cells colored in blue are tumor cells and cells colored in yellow are immune cells. And we can see that a tumor tissue can contain both tumor and non-tumor locations. In the country, non-tumor tissue normally contains no tumor locations. In other words, non-tumor tissue is homogeneous. So here come the challenges in practice labels of sub-tissue locations are hard to get. So the label of tumor is for the whole tissue. And if we label all the locations in a tumor tissue as tumor in the classifier, it might cause mislabeling of some lung tumor locations in the tumor tissue. So the performance of a classifier will be compromised by the mislabeled locations, no matter which classifier is used. So to address, the, to address these challenges, we formulate this problem as a multiple instance learning problem. So multiple instance learning considers groups of observations called bags. And a bag contains multiple observations and the observations are called instances. A positive bag contains at least one positive instance but for negative bags, they contain only negative instances. However, the ground truth label are only available for bags, but not for instances. So in this case, uh, MISVM is a multiple instance learning method which perform well in instance level classification. So we selected it as one of our baselines. So how does it work? So first, it initializes all the instances as, uh, by the label of their bags and build a classifier 
then update the label of the instances based on the prediction of current classifier. Then use the updated, updated label to update the classifier. Then repeat this process until it converges. So in our problem, we, in our problem in the domain of MSI classification, a tissue can be viewed as a bag and the location on a tissue can be viewed as an instance. So a tumor tissue can contain both tumor and non-tumor locations. However, non-tumor -tissue, non tissue contains only non-tumor locations. So after formulating this problem as a multiple instance learning problem, we propose MSCN, which stands for multiple instance learning based convolutional neural network. So we build our model on top of MIC, MISVM. So first, let's look at the notations. XJ represents the collections of mass spectrum in tissue J, and XIJ represents the mass spectrum at location I in tissue J, and YJ represents the annotation of tissue J, and YIJ represents the label of location I in tissue J. By the definition of multiple instance learning, so yij, yj can be formulated as the maximum of yij. Pi ij represents the probability of location i in tissue j being one. So let's look at the algorithm. So similarly, we initialize yij by yj, and then we compute the CN parameters for the current label of yij, then we compute pi ij, then we update yij based on pi ij in the tumor tissues. Note that we do not update yij in non-tumor tissues. So if all the locations on a tumor tissue are predicted as non-tumor, then we select the location with highest probability of being tumor as tumor. Then we repeat this process until the updated labels smaller than its threshold. So we use a, the intuition of that we use a convolutional neural network as our classifier is that in a mass spectrum, M over Z are, in de, are not independent features. Instead, they are correlated to each other. A multiple M over Z can be corresponding to one type of molecule. For example, sodium ducts, dehydrated ions, fragment ions, and isotopic ions. So these ions have a pattern of mass difference. As shown in this spectrum, so these two peaks has a mass difference of 38 which could be potassium ducts. And these two peaks has a mass difference of 22, which might be sodium ducts. So we use the CNN as our classifier, which intends to capture the dependencies of M over Z. It, took, it takes a mass spectrum as input and output the probability of each location. So the structure of the uh, CNN consists of three convolutional layer with ReLU as activation function and one fully connected layer. Next, we evaluated our model on both simulated data and the experimental data. First, let's do, take a look at the simulated data. In order to make the simulation as realistic as possible, we did not build our simulation from scratch. So instead, we took the healthy tissue from the RCC experiment. Since they are from the same group, we assume that there's no endogenous differences between these tissues. And then we split each tissue into halves. And, and then we label the left half 
of the upper neonucleated tissue as tumor and the remaining part as non-tumor. And so to mimic the pathology annotations, so the entire upper tissue were annotated as a tumor and the entire lower tissue were annotated as healthy. So to simulate MRVC dependencies, we add a synthetic anonite with four MRVC features, differentially abandoned between tumor and healthy in, in this mass spectrum. And to make it as realistic as possible, we also simulated a confounding morphology, uh, which is spanning um, both tumor and non-tumor parts. So let's take a look at the results. So this table shows the comparison of sub-tissue classification accuracy of four models, SVM, CNN, MySVM, and MyCNN. So the accuracy is calculated in this formula. TP is the true positive and TN is the true negative, P and N means the total positive and negative, and the balanced accuracy is calculated in this way. So we can see from the results, MSCN has the highest classification accuracy on both training and validation set. And also, the multiple instance learning based method performs better than non-multiple instance learning based methods. And here's the realization of the predictions of four models. So this is the ground truth, and this is the prediction of three mod four models. We can see that the prediction of MICN is closest to the ground truth. Next, let's move to the experimental data. So the first data set is the human renal cell carcinoma data set. So it has the ground truth for tissue level annotation, but there's no ground truth for the sub-tissue labels. So we have eight pairs of cancer and healthy tissue, and the ionization source is DESI. Um, the mass range is from 150 to 1,000 Dalton. And 7,567 mass spectra were collected, and on average, 472 mass spectra per tissue. Since we have no ground truth for sub tissue labels, we cannot calculate the accuracy. However, since we assume that the healthy tissues contain no tumor locations. We can take a look at the predictions on healthy tissues from this prediction on testing data. Showing in this figure, MICN predicts less tumor locations in healthy tissues than the other three methods. So to further evaluate the generalization of our method, we use another data set of human bladder cancer experiment. So in this data set, sub-tissue level labels are, are available. So we view it as our ground truth. 49 tissues embedded on two microarrays were analyzed by a multi analyzation source. The mass range is from 800 to 2,300 Dalton and 3,152 mass spectra were collected, on average 77 per tissue. So we choose one slide as our training set and another one as our validation set. We evaluated the accuracy on sub-tissue classifications. The results are shown in this table. And we can see that MSCNN achieves the highest classification accuracy of 0.9 for one for training set and 0.9 to eight for the validation set. And we can see that MSVM and MSCNN improved the classification of SVM and CNN in terms of both accuracy and balanced accuracy. 
So this table visualizes the tissue level annotation, sub tissue level labels, and the classification of four models for a subset of the human bladder cancer data. So for those tumor tissues, they contain both tumor and non-tumor locations. And given the tissue level annotations, MSCN is able to um, locate the real tumor locations on the tumor tissues instead of classifying all the locations in tumor tissue as tumor. And also, it has much cleaner prediction on those stromal tissues than the other methods. I hope that I convinced you the MSCN can do a good job in the MSI classification with only tissue level annotations. But CNN itself is a black box. Interpretability is very important in biological study. So we use LAM to interpret our model. So LAM represents a local interpretable model agnostic explanation. It is a post hoc explainer. So for more information about LAM, you can refer to this paper. LAM can tell us which feature is crucial to the model to make a decision on one sample. So this plot shows the LAM based the importance of MRVZ features when classifying a tumor location in a validation set. We can see that MSCN captures the four true predictive features, which are corresponding to the synthetic anonite, which is differentially abundant in tumor and non-tumor group. To summarize, we propose a semi-supervised approach MSCN for sub-tissue classification in MSI. MSCN has a good performance on MSI datasets with only tissue level annotations. MSCN can capture the dependence between MRVZ features. We believe this is an important step to, towards accurate sub-tissue classifications in basic biology and the clinic applications of MSI. At last, I would thank my colleagues in Ogavetex lab and Dr. Melanie Fo. So if I have questions, feel free to contact me via my email. Thank you.